the nerds. I messed up. I recommended a plugin from ChatGPT, made a bunch of videos about it, even made a course. And unfortunately, it ended up getting shut down and terminating its service. This app was so popular that it was included within the plugin store, well, popular tab. But now, if you even go to search for it, you can't even find it. And for those that have it installed, you can try to use it, but it basically tells you that there's server issues and it's shutting down and you should go check out the community post, which goes into vague detail about how Notable is terminating its platform and services. The CEO, Pierre, posted this late Friday night. Talk about some impeccable timing to launch this at the end of the work week, late at night. Anyway, homeboy said this. Today, the Notable team has made the extremely difficult decision to terminate our platform, operations, and service effective immediately. Try to actually go in and use their service even outside of ChatGPT, you can't do it. But they have allowed you to access it to go in and download your files from the user settings pages. So before we go further into why this app shut down and also what alternatives we're gonna use, we need to understand what actually Notable did. So this app, external to ChatGPT, was an interactive and collaborative Jupyter Notebook. This allowed you and others, including ChatGPT, to go inside the notebook and collaborate real time in writing Python and SQL code to analyze data. And it provided this in an environment similar to Jupyter Notebooks. Now Notable built a plugin that allowed you to go inside of ChatGPT, activate this plugin, and then using human language, communicate with ChatGPT to then write code within this Jupyter Notebook-like environment. And you may be like, Luke, why do you need all that stuff? The advanced data analysis feature inside of the core ChatGPT model, right now GPT-4, can do a lot of those things. Right here I have a chat with ChatGPT where I provided a data set and inside of the chat, it started analyzing the salary it even provides all the different code on the back end that it used to generate these visualizations. But there's a big problem with this feature. If I wanted to actually share my work that I've done, I could go in and try to share the chat. But for one, all the images and downloaded files are not gonna be included inside of it. So it's not really that useful. The other problem is that this is actually very limiting in what data you can import into it. There are a number of files that you can provide to it, but data that I have isn't always in this specific format. Specifically, my data is located, like most people and companies, in the cloud, inside of a database there. And at the advanced data analysis feature, doesn't have the ability to connect to it. And Notable could, including some of the most popular databases like SQL Server, MySQL, and Postgres. On top of that, Notable was SOC 2 compliant which allowed me to be more comfortable with connecting my data source to this application. Now, connecting to ChatGPT is a completely other story. If you need to connect to private data, I recommend using something like ChatGPT Enterprises, but that's a whole nother video. But back to Notable, because you were saving your work in one location, this was great for two purposes. One, you could easily pick up where you left off, and two, you could easily share and collaborate on your work. So with Notable now shutting down, this actually affects a lot on the channel. Mainly, I have a bunch of videos that I made on ChatGPT that specifically call out this plugin and how to use it. Additionally, over this past year, I've been putting together a course called ChatGPT for Data Analytics that I was planning on using as a revenue source for this channel so I can continue to provide free content on YouTube. Well, unfortunately, uh, my plan has now been foiled because Notable was a core ingredient within this course, specifically in the capstone project. Now the content in the beginning chapters are still very much useful and relevant. It's not until you get into the later chapters and specifically whenever you get into the capstone that becomes irrelevant based on the Notable plugin. And so on Friday after Notable canceled their service to reach out to all the students and inform them of this. So I understood if they wanted a refund and I was more than willing to give them a refund back. Now my current students still have access to all the relevant material but I'm not taking any more new students. So I'm evaluating now whether just to package up all this different content that's still applicable and turn it into YouTube and basically make it open source, which is kind of what I want to do from the get-go. So this is kind of a blessing in disguise, but this is all pretty much a mute point now. So why did Notable shut down? I found this Reddit thread trying to get to the bottom of this. As author of this and many others in this thread were curious of now what were alternatives for this plugin. So this Reddit user, Kofnik, appeared in this thread and claims to have worked on the ChatGPT plugin at Notable. He brought up a point saying, 
I'm sure Pierre, who was the former CEO of Notable, will release more information about the future of the team when he can. The platform and the plugins won't stick around though. One user, Sinjab, went on to ask, please make the ChatGPT plugin open source. And Kofnik confirmed that it wasn't realistically feasible to open source Notable. Open sourcing the plugin without open sourcing the platform would make no sense. All the plugin did is make API calls to the platform. He then went on to suggest this repository, which he's the primary contributor to, as this kernel sidecar provides the building blocks for creating applications that run alongside Jupyter kernels. But I'll be honest, I ain't trying to build Notable. He then went on to suggest another repository from another contributor on the team from Notable that provides a similar like environment but also allows you to build a plugin within ChatGPT that interacts with the Jupyter Notebook. This potential solution though has a few caveats and mainly it looks like it could be a little buggy. Another user, PP314159, suggested this alternative for Jupyter Lab using their Jupyter AI. Now this solution seems very viable. It allows you to have a Jupyter Notebook inside of something like Jupyter Lab and then query a model to generate code for you. Now the interesting thing about this one is you're not limited to just using ChatGPT's or OpenAI's model. Instead, you can even use things like Anthropic's model, CLAW. And Kavnik from the Notable team second this recommendation, but also recommended a solution from William Stein, which is CoCalc. Now CoCalc, out of all the solution here, potentially seems the most viable. So with this, you have your own Jupyter Notebook that's launched that CoCalc is hosting. And from there, you can use a ChatGPT pop-up to then communicate with this large language model. It even goes as far to being able to read the output of your cells and find out when you have an error and help you troubleshoot it. Now one note with this service as you are using their computers, so it's gonna cost you money. They do have free versions that you can start out and test out before to make sure you like it. But after that, it sounds like they want you to upgrade to a paid version. Now with all these recommendations in this subreddit, I think they don't take into account users that want to stay inside of ChatGPT. There's a lot of speculation going around that GPTs are going to replace plugins. And these GPTs allow you to create a custom version of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. You can also build these things in like five or 10 minutes. So they're super simple to get up and running. I'm just speculating here, but I feel that OpenAI is really pushing people to build these GPTs instead of plugins. I don't know if it's for security reasons or whatnot, but it seems like they're really placing a lot of emphasis on this, including building out an entire store where you can shop for GPTs. So I think it goes without saying, I'm gonna be keeping an eye out for any GPTs that could potentially integrate with a Jupyter Notebook. And the last alternative I'm gonna talk about are AI coding assistants, which are available today. And you have a bunch of different options for it actually. So right here is GitHub Copilot and is one I've used previously. And it's a great way of having a ChatGPT like environment right next to your Jupyter Notebook. Now GitHub Copilot is not the only other option. Google has a solution as well called Duet AI. It provides a similar environment just like GitHub Copilot allowing you to chat with your code and then actually update it as necessary. But the other big dog in town is JetBrains AI. And so for this, if you wanted to work with a Jupyter Notebook, you'd have to use something like PyCharm and then you could have this AI assistant help you inside of it. Anyway, all this to say, yeah, this sucks that Notable shut down and now we don't have this service available inside of ChatGPT. But I do think there are different options available for us to take and I'm gonna be exploring them on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed. All right, as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. With that, I'll see you in the next one.